Her mother would later bring up Garber's niece, Gray Ricefield. My grandmother was a very warm person. If you think of the ideal, wonderful grandmother who will do everything for you, who always thinks you're perfect. At an early age, Greta's enthusiasm for the cinema developed from her passion for the theater. Determined to become an actress, she staged plays in the street with the local children. Mary Pickford was Greta's favorite film star. She was world famous for playing spirited yet feminine roles. Greta saw this film several times. Greta's first appearance on Celluloid, aged 15, an advertising film for the department store in which she worked. It secured her several more promotional films, such as this one shot on the roof of a Stockholm hotel. By an uncanny coincidence, the camera moves to reveal at a nearby table the popular actor Lars Hansen, her future leading man in Sweden and Hollywood. Greta was anxious for more serious acting and managed to get into the Royal Dramatic Theatre Academy. Students had to learn everything from fencing to foreign languages. Greta never thought she stood a chance. I am horribly uncultured, she told her new friend Mimi Pollock. Så blev jag hemsk och vän med Garbo redan första dagen när vi satt vid bordet och skulle presentera oss vilka vi var. Vi var sju stycken och alla hade vi gått i så kallad high school eller vad det heter utom Greta. När hon reste sig upp och blev blodröd i ansiktet och sa folkskola. Garbo once said to me, I would have been a success no matter what path I chose. I think there was a determination and resolve in Garbo's character that blew through just about every obstacle in its way. While at the Academy, she auditioned for Moritz Stiller. One of the two great directors of Swedish cinema, he was notorious for his tantrums on the set. With Victor Seastrom, he had made Swedish cinema the envy of the world. Stiller wanted Greta for his next film, a huge production of a Swedish classic. But there was a drawback. Greta was not so small as at the time she was, after just the Berlin saga or under that time, because she was a little full. Så där och hon blev tillsagd av Moje att magra om hon skulle få rollen. Han sa i Amerika så han skulle aldrig en filmskådespelare ska våga bli så så tjock som du är så. Så hon satt och åt spenat från morgon till kväll och var så sjuk så hon höll på att bli galen. Men jag vet inte hur många kilo hon gick ner. Hon blev smal och sen har bibehållit detta. The relationship between Garbo and Stiller was extremely close and it was extremely problematic in terms of the fact that he bullied her, he was determined to mold her, to make her bend to his will dramatically and especially emotionally, and to teach her his form of acting, which was the film medium's form of acting, which was very different from that which she had learned on the stage. With the aid of a brilliant cameraman, Stiller hoped to bring out a quality he sensed hidden in this actress. Swedish critics were harsh, but Greta and Lars Hansen won praise abroad. Stiller felt the name Gustafsson was too cumbersome. She was rechristened Greta Garbo. Stiller departed aboard a Zeppelin for the German premiere of Gusta Berlingsager. Garbo followed by train. 
they regarded the future with enormous optimism. The Germans offered to finance a film in Turkey, which fell through. Victor Seestrom had left Sweden for Hollywood, where he worked for Louis B. Mayer, to whom he recommended Stiller. And Mayer went to see Gustav Behling's saga in Berlin. From the first reel, he fell in love with Garbo. When my grandfather met Stiller, he instantly loathed him. I don't know what it was about Stiller that turned him off, but obviously Stiller had this really close, protective relationship with Garbo. And my grandfather wanted to be the most important person in her life. No chance with Stiller. No city was as exciting as New York. No country offered such dazzling prospects. Garbo had made an acclaimed Swedish film. She had also made an acclaimed German film, The Joyless Street, and she had a contract with Hollywood's biggest studio. Greta and Stiller disembarked, anticipating a tumultuous reception. When Garbo arrived in New York, a photographer came aboard the ship and shot only four sheets of film, uh, and that was her introduction to the American public, her posing in a checkered suit on the deck of a ship. The poor man was only getting $10 for this job and thought, why should I bring in more film than I'm getting paid for? But he was so embarrassed because she was so enthusiastic that he took more pictures of her with no film in the camera. <laughs> 